saying that I'm making this video, or we're making this video, to raise awareness of them of all for conviction, to raise awareness for victims of abuse, uh, victims of child neglect, child abuse, domestic violence, uh, victims of kids who are victims of, of the parents saying they're homeschooling them when they're not, they're just using it to keep them segregated and separated from all the world, and mainly about to raise awareness about injustice. I'm in Jefferson City Correctional Center in Missouri. I'm from southern Missouri, southeast Missouri, the Boot Hill. My lawful conviction happened in Kennedy.
my mom and tell me the truth. You know, so I mean, I really wanted, wanted my mom to be in my life, and I battled for years for it to be. Well, in my teens, I, I could barely read or write. I didn't even know how to do mathematics and stuff. I was just, my IQ was only 73, you know? There wasn't, there wasn't really nothing I could do, uh, except for just be scared of living in fear. My stepdad used to take his kids in there and make us run it dirty. Dirty errands, you know, do his dirty work, and then if he didn't do it right, then he was a piece of shit. He, this was screamed on a nightly basis. You work with piece of shit. You no good, fat man. It, it was rubbed in, just different things. You're a bastard. Nobody wants you. Nobody wants you to do with you. If you don't do this, if you don't do that, and it wasn't just screamed. It was yelled to the point to where you're in your face, and, and you can't even move your toes. And so back to the hospital, I'd rush. I got to where if I had a scream or yell or fighting or anything back to the hospital I know. and I'd be in the hospital scared to death and on the way up to the hospital being told hey don't say nothing don't say nothing because the kids get taken away you're in you know don't they'll call social services just say you blacked out just say this so the doctors are looking at me like the hospital is looking at me like man your heart's beating way too fast you're shaking like a leaf something's wrong what's wrong but I couldn't talk because you learned that it's in the, in the south and it could be everywhere but I know in the south Nobody talks, nobody, everybody minds their business, everybody, nobody wants to point out what's going on in the family. So that's what, what I did, I held everything back and I got to where I didn't want to live. I didn't want to live anymore and then I started falling into where all I knew was this hate speech that I was given. All I knew was this, uh, the only kind of education I had was this uh, Aryan type, uh, white supremacy type thing that I was given. And I'm here to tell you about this, I denounce all this stuff, I don't, this stuff is, is a monster within itself, it's evil. And, and here, you know, there was a time in prison, I ran around uh, gangs, white supremacist gangs and stuff. I denounced them. I don't care, I mean, I don't care who gets mad about it or who feels like that I'm crossing the line or something. I denounce all of it because it's all fake. I have, I stand up for myself as a man. And the people who do that wear swastikas and, and lightning bolts and stuff, it's fake. And it's messed up because nobody, I went through hell over all of this stuff. This stuff played a role in all the hell I went through. And not only that, it's just, it's fundamentally wrong just to hate any person for being a person. I realize now that people are people and that's just the way it is. And you just accept people for people. Some are good and some are bad. It don't matter if you're white, black, or Hispanic, it don't matter. And I'm learning this way. It's something I'm growing more toward and I'm, and I'm trying to be a better person on a daily basis. Because I want to be for myself. I'm so tired of living with the hell I live with in my head. Since I was little, I remember I couldn't even get a good night's sleep. Sometimes I'd be up for days scared of death. Then as I got older, I couldn't sleep. Because all I'd have is nightmares of this man screaming for the guns and shooting at me. Hurting us. Hurting our family. <laughs> Matter of fact, there was no family. It, was, it just seemed like there was nowhere to turn. Well, again, as I got older, by the time I was 16, I was... I got picked up on a mother I did not commit. <laughs> it was scary because I didn't know what to do. Even at 16, I didn't seem like I had a mind of a 12, 13 year old. I didn't know what was going on. I seen my stepdad earlier that day get paranoid and skipped on out for the methamphetamine and end up killing somebody. And you can review the other tapes on everything that happened on that. Uh, that's being made out of YouTube tape. That's being made about it. I didn't know what to do. My life was horrible, man. When I got put in the county jail, you know, when I got certified to say trial as a dog, I listened to all these people lie. And, and I, I watched the state, uh, the prosecutor in there, who was supposed to be there to uphold the law, and he just used a gossip, rumor, and hearsay to be convicted, or to convict you, or to send you away as an adult, when the stuff he used wasn't even right. It was 100% false. 
I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And I wish I could tell him. 